So at one point, I remember Connie Francis was a singer, now I'm gonna date myself. And she was brutally raped um, at gunpoint at some motel. And they were talking about this on the news or something like that. And I was like, holy crap, that's what happened to me. Like it finally figured out like, like oh, like that's what happened to me. And I remember one of my aunts saying, oh, her life is ruined now. And I'm thinking, if Connie Francis was raped and her life is ruined, then I'm. And I think that's one of the worst things you can, you can I sort of had this mindset for a long time that my life was ruined, that I was somehow damaged or broken and that it was beyond fixing. Because people, and, you, and even today, people say, oh, their life is ruined, they were raped, their life is ruined. And it's not. It's definitely a departure from the normal trajectory of life, but it doesn't mean your life is ruined. And that was probably worse than being raped, was hearing people say, so-and-so's life is ruined. Because you sort of like, all right, so what are you going to do? So anyway, so I, I kind of finally figure out what's going on. I'm like, oh, that's what happened. So I actually called the Boston Rape Crisis Center and I called them up and I said, I think I was raped. And this is what happened. And their response was, and there's a caveat to this because they would never say this now, but the response back then was, men can't be raped. Only men can be rapists. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like I was totally like, like shocked. I'm like, well, if men can't be raped, and I was, what does that mean? So I must be really bad or something. I must be really like a mess. And then I went to Station 8, the Boston Police Department. And I'm a young kid now. I'm like 14, 15, 16. I'm young. And like, I haven't told anybody this, except for like, people tell you now. So my parents don't know, like nobody knows what's going on. So I go to the Boston Police Department and I walk into Station 8. It's now a hotel. Um, I think, I think it was Jury's, and now it's called a whole, I think it's called Lowe's now. But anyway, I walk in, and I can remember this like it was yesterday. I walk into these big, like, um, I think they're granite, like arches, and you walk in, it's a big foreboding place, and something like out of a Dick Tracy novel, something like that. And, uh, I walked up to the counter, and I said, I told the guy what had happened, and his response was, um, it's your word against a teacher at Boston Latins. They'll never believe you. It's just a misdemeanor to go home and forget about it. I was like, what the f really? So at this point, I figured out that I knew that I was on my own, like that no one was gonna help me. And uh, I really lost trust in people. I was like, not only did this guy do this to me, no one's gonna help me. And then, I, and then after that, I actually wrote a letter. So to the principal at Boston Latin, Mr. Connor Passos, that was his name at the time. And I remember putting the ladder, there was a, up at Orient Heights in East Boston. There's a main, I think it's Saratoga Street, that goes into Winthrop. It's a main drag. I can't remember, I can't believe I can't remember the name of the street. But one corner off from Winter Heights Station, there was a dentist office on your left. So if you were in East Boston looking towards Winthrop, there was a dentist office on your left. There was a blue mailbox right there on the corner. And I wrote a letter and I told them what happened and I put the letter in the envelope and I went to school like normal. And I used to go to school thinking, okay, at some point, Mr. Conopas is gonna come in the office and everything's gonna be okay. Never got the call. So I knew I was on my own. 